Chapter 31 Two Heroes Use integrity in all your dealings, whether they be of great importance or unseen by others. Likewise, be just in all that you do, not as to be seen of others, but to hold fast to what is true. There is no occasion to be cruel. True warriors of the Yako family line show their strength in holding to what is pure and true in both adversity and in peace. One must not flee from conflict, nor shall they be rash in their decisions. They shall manifest strength to hold to what is pure in the face of all adversity. Do what is honorable, whether seen or unseen, because your actions will manifest who you truly are. One must show compassion at all times, and must be willing to suffer for what is pure and good. Let your word be law, that you will fulfill all that you speak. There shall be no need for promises. One is responsible for everything he does, and must have utmost loyalty to those under his authority and to those above him. The Yako Family Creed, circa 1185. A person is to first honor God in his holy church, and hold to all that is good and true. If they will not do this, let them be anathema. A person is to serve both his nation and defend his companions against all evil. Those who will not do so are the enemy of the people. A person is to vindicate the innocent and defend those who can't help themselves. If they will not do this, let them be punished. A person is to will the good for all people, including their enemies. If they will not do this, let them be anathema. A person is to be prudent in all manner of things. If they will not do this, they shall be fettered. A person is to be wise and careful in all judgments, and revere the teaching of the elders. If they will not do this, let them be deposed. A person is to abstain from all intoxication and belligerence. If they will not do this, let them be made sober. A person is to be courageous in all things. Cowardice shall be punished in both this life and eternally in the next. A person shall seek truth and live by the truth in all things. If one shall live by lies and deceit, let them be cast out. A person shall use their powers for what is good. If one shall abuse them for self-enrichment, let them be excommunicated. A person shall not flee from conflict, but face it with courage. Cowardice shall be punished in both this life and the next. A person shall honor the inherent dignity of the image of God in all people. If one will not do so, let them be anathema. Tanuki Clan Early Written Code of Conduct, circa 1334. Glory to the Empire! After having destroyed Iron Henge and returning to base, Natale ran to Buck Ringtail and embraced him. She then let go as a Selenese Imperial propaganda said, Your reputation has drawn quite an audience both from the Confederate rebels and Imperial Army. Now they say so long as the ringtail is in the sky, there is still hope for victory. Why don't you fly by our men and celebrate this victory before you inevitably return to your home country? You will be compensated for your time. Natalia then answered, I don't see why now. Just send me the coins and I'll fly by in the night, Starker. Good. We'll be looking forward to it. Nojitsune Night Stalker. Seeing what he was about to get his former squad members into, he ordered them to swap their KCAS 21s for TCI interceptors and said, It's better this way. I think we all know the Coonhound isn't meant for Night Stalkers. You saw that in her last engagement. Fennec then protested, Then why make us fly the Tanuki planes and not the ones we were trained on? At least in Tanuki aircraft, you have the speed and maneuverability to have a fighting chance against Night Stalkers. Otherwise, we'll just have a repeat of last time. Besides, the controls are identical, and you've got the same speed, maneuverability, and firepower as a Night Stalker. Fennec then looked at the controls in the cockpit with disgust at the very fact he was flying a Tanuki aircraft. He then looked at the instrument panel, realizing he didn't have energy shields, or the KCAS 21's advanced countermeasures. Fennec then complained, This thing is a piece of Tanuki trash! How are we supposed to win a fight against Night Stalkers without energy shields or our K-drives? Yaku then radioed from his Night Stalker. It's not the plane that beats the Night Stalker, but the pilot behind it. Remember, 
The ace I were after nearly equaled me in my coonhound with an antiquated foxhound. Have you not learned one thing with me as your squadron leader? Actually, I have. I've realized Tarnakis are a legitimate threat, and we've been underestimating them for too long. Yagodlin sighed. <sighs> not the answer I was looking for, but at least you learned something. What I hoped you learned is that your lives are valuable, and not something to be wasted on someone else's war. Yako's squadron then took off and made their way towards the Selenese imperial capital. Yako then said, I don't believe there's a vixen in the world that could say no to you now. But as your squadron leader, I'm ordering you to set course to the Confederate Republic of Zolshira. I'll handle Natalia. Fennec then exclaimed, Are you insane? We're not leaving our squadron leader. Your deaths will achieve nothing. Besides, this war between us and that Tanaki are mine and Inari's, not yours. Comply with the order and head south. The rest of Yako's squadron then did as they were told, and set course for Zolsura, while Yako went to face Natalia, alone. Ace of Aces While at the flying over the reclaimed capital of Lansaro City, the Selenese Imperial Air Force loaded Natalia's Night Stalker with weapons, in case of Confederate attack. They also repainted the rudders with her ring tail pattern, and created a new squadron named after her for the best of the best. But the celebration wasn't long before Natalia heard over the radio from a familiar voice. Natalia, are you hearing this? Corrupt governments and masters are no longer worth fighting to protect. Natalia then clenched her instruments with nothing showing up on radar. She then realized the situation and took evasive maneuvers while scanning the sky for stealth fighters as she yelled, Who the hell is this? Yakovin creeped up behind her night stalker undetected and answered, The right hand of Inari and the avenger of all the Zolshur and aces you killed that I trained. Yaku then fired a burst of blaster bolts, stripping Natalia of her energy shields, before firing a heat seeker. Natalia then switched over to thrust vectoring ion engines, as the heat seeker lost their target, while her plane regained more maneuverability. Yaku then switched to using the Night Stalker's Gatling gun as Natalia's energy shields began to recharge. She then reversed the missile launch system to fire a radar missile backwards towards Yaku's nose. Yaku then evaded the missile while destroying it with the laser point defense system. Yaku then activated his Night Stalker's magic suppression system at half power to suppress Natalia's Tanuki sense while keeping his Kitsune sense still active. Yaku then used his Kitsune sense and protogen augmentation to outmaneuver Natalia and returned to chasing Natalia's tail. Natalia then noticed her Tanuki sense was being suppressed and she returned her suppression with suppressing all of Yaku's magical ability. Then she used the thrust vectoring nozzles to turn 180 degrees while flying in a curved arc while shooting Yako's Night Stalker with the 25mm Gatling gun. And while doing so, she shifted all energy shield power to the forward facing emitter, completely absorbing Yako's 25mm shells, while managing to land a lucky shot on Yako's forward emitter. Yako then took evasive action while switching all energy shields to the aft emitter. Yako then used his protogen augmentation to take an 11G turn back into position behind Natalia's Night Stalker. Meanwhile, Finnegan, Bill, and James Wolfe saw what was happening and scrambled in the stolen Night Stalkers to assist Natalia. But before Finnegan and Bill could join the fight, Yako fired two missiles that disabled Finnegan and Bill's Night Stalker before takeoff. Yako then mocked, Did you honestly think I wouldn't expect you to bring friends? Now it's time for me to finish what you started. Yako then flew behind Natalia and stripped her of her energy shields before firing a burst of 25mm anti-aircraft shells. Except this time it hit her laser point defense system, an energy shield generator before she could shake him off. Yaku then realigned himself at Natalia's tail, but then he immediately took evasive action once a Night Stalker started shooting at him with its quad blaster cannons. Yaku then got re situated, realizing just who joined the battle. Wolfie then said over the comms, You picked the wrong f f cack, Nojitsune. Now it's time for the pack to rip you apart. Wolfie then pursued Yaku from behind and said to Natalia over the comms, Talk to me, Coon. Your comms still working? Natalia then kept evading Yako while Wolfie kept pursuing and said, I'm fine. Line up the shot and kill Yako. Natalia then kept flying around and pulling high G turns to avoid Yako's bullets and missiles until Yako said, Mission accomplished. 
and fired his last missile, landing a direct hit on Natalia's unshielded aircraft. But in the slight relishing of his own victory over his nemesis, Wolfie stripped Yako of his energy shield and fired two missiles, causing Yako's plane to explode in midair. Meanwhile, Natalia was still flying. Wolfie then asked, Talk to me, Coon. Are you alright? Natalia then answered, Losing thrust. I don't think I'll make it to the runway. Then pull the ejection handle. There's no point in risking it now. Yako has been confirmed killed. Natalia then tried to pull the ejection handle, but it failed. Then the flight system started to fail without power, and then she crashed, unable to eject. She had no clue how long it had been. All she knew was she couldn't move her limbs and she was bleeding. Everything felt like it snapped, and only had fuzzy vision of the tanuki carrying her. She then blacked out again, only to wake up with an IV in her bloodstream and a full-body cast in the world's strongest painkillers. Natalia then heard the rhythmic beat of the heart rate monitor, hooked up to her broken body. Buck then said, Thank God you're all right. Finnegan and Bill are also f fine and came along to pay you a visit. Natalia then moved her eyes to see them as Finnegan said, No need to worry. The war between the Confederacy and Selene's empire is over, and the dictator Vixerina is overthrown. Queen Ariana's look made sure you had the best care available. Natalia then tried to speak, but it was too painful. Buck then said, You don't have to say anything, Natalia. Just maybe after you heal in a couple of months, you should consider taking a vacation or retiring. You've got some massive tanuki balls going after Yaka like you and Wolfie did. Natalia then moved her eyes like she was unsure how to respond. Buck then said, Zanko also came by for a visit and made us all cinnamon rolls and cocoa. I even told her you like your hot cocoa made with dragon milk, and she made it like that just for you. But the weird thing was, she said you and Wolfie killing Yako was an act of mercy. She said you fulfilled his duty to his family to die with honor, when all he's known was dishonor. Even Inari, who has no feelings for anyone, secretly mourned his death after hearing his plane exploded in midair. Natalia then looked at Buck confused. Buck then continued, Maybe it will be a lesson to Inari not to treat her servants as disposable, but I doubt that very much. But besides that, Titania and the others are doing well, and I hope you get better soon, babe. In the meantime, I'll take care of Titania the best I can. Finnegan then said, I also heard Yako faced you alone so that his companions Glacia, Ferusion, and my cousin Fennec could flee Inari's control. I'm just happy my cousin Fennec now has a future because of him. So, I guess Vixie is now the last hope for the Kitsune clan without Yako. In the meantime, I'll try to land a date with Zenko and get rejected while you recover. Thanks for saving my ass so many times. And I'd probably be dead if it wasn't for you and Wolfie. Finnegan then left the room as Victor and his sister Zenko came in. Victor then used his ethereal magic to heal Natalia to some extent, feeling some of her pain as his own body wincing. But Natalia felt well enough to speak and said, Thanks for coming to see me. Sorry I'm not more presentable. Victor then said, It's not your fault for maintenance overlooking a faulty ejection handle, but I'm grateful you're still with us. Natalia then laughed. <laughs> After this, I'm going to need a vacation. Zanko then put a super long straw in a half-gallon thermos so Natalia could drink her new dragon milk hot cocoa. Zanko then said, I hope you get better soon. I also made cinnamon rolls and cocoa. Natalia then smiled. He didn't have to do all that for me. Zanko then clasped her hands while happily waving her seven golden foxtails. Well, I just thought I'd do something nice for my neighbor's special someone. Zanko then sighed. <sighs> but I only had time to visit because my boss laid me off for, for a month. But that means I get to spend time with you and my brother. And I've only heard good things about you from him and your boyfriend. Natalia then blushed, but Zanko said, It's nothing to be embarrassed about. You two already kiss and hug each other. Buck then laughed. 
And she said our relationship was purely professional. That didn't last very long. Natalia then let out a sigh. (sighs) You're right. Also, thanks again for everything you've done. And I couldn't do without you either. Until you get better, I'll be right by your side. The end of Onojitsune. Despite everything, I still live. Everyone thinks I am dead, and I am no longer fit to show my face around Inari and the clan again. Yet, in spite of my situation, I feel pure, cleansed of the filth of this world. Perhaps it is better this way, the way of a hermit, and to be forgotten and satisfied with little. I shall live out the rest of my days amongst the natural world and grow in virtue. And if it is my destiny to return to society, then I shall. And when I have gained all nine tales, then I shall return. Sozan Yako. Did you know this? The two creeds. The two creeds are based on two historical codes of conduct. The Yako family creed was based on the code of Bushido, while the Tanuki clan code of honor was based on the medieval code of chivalry. No Jitsune folklore reference. The way Yako's end is a tragedy is a reference to how in actual Kitsune folklore, the story of a no Jitsune usually ends in a tragedy, even when they do something positive, such as Yako freeing his squad members from Inari's control. There's also the aspect of the no Jitsune as preferring to avoid society and human activity, fearing danger. However, this contrasts with Sozan Yako, because he avoids society now, because he sees himself as unworthy.